Hello lovelies, in this video Tim is going to be looking at daily stress for your A-level psychology. Now there are lots of facts and studies and people that you need to be able to remember in this and to help you do that. In addition to the notes you should be taking as you watch this video, over my website there is the massive A-level psychology course to help you get prepared for your exams. <laughs> all experience daily hassles and daily stress. Daily hassles are minor experiences and events in our everyday lives which are stressful. These are usually mundane rather than exceptional. There are a huge number of examples such as having a workload which is too, uh, too large, misplacing a needed object like our keys or phone, getting stuck in heavy traffic repeatedly, experiencing recurrent unpleasant noise or disruption, a lack of sleep and disagreements with family or neighbours. On the other hand, some everyday experiences can reduce our stress levels. Psychologists call these uplifts. They are in contrast to hassles. Like hassles, these are many and varied. They include examples like good school results, spending time with close loved family, interactions with our pets and socialising with our friends and neighbours. For each of us, our daily lives, every day, are a constant balance between stressful and draining hassles and the happy uplifts which work to reduce the impact of these hassles. The two are constantly in balance. Kanna and a group of researchers in 1981 did some further research into daily hassles and how they affect us. This was research done using 100 adults as participants. Each one of these 100 adults completed a basic textual questionnaire every month which asked them to identify daily hassles they had experienced in that month from a given list of 117. Each participant also rated these hassles, or at least the ones they had experienced, to judge how severe the impact had been and how much stress these hassles had caused them. This process was also done with uplifts. Participants were first asked to identify uplifts they had experienced in the previous month, working from a given list. This list consisted of 135, so in each case there was quite a number to choose from. After identifying the uplifts, they were asked to rate them in terms of their positive impact on their stress levels. This was done every month for nine months. As one may expect, certain hassles were very common, things like worries about money, worries about weight and personal appearance, and basic family disturbances and disagreements, things we all experience from time to time. The hassles that were given high scores by participants were much more likely to have a subsequent impact on physical health and well-being. Those with the highest scores also had the worst impact on physical health. Effectively, the worst hassles had the worst effect. On the other hand, common events on the uplift scale seem to have the opposite effect. They reduced levels of stress, or sometimes, in a best-case scenario, they even prevented that stressful effect of the hassle in the first place. That said, there are some issues with this study. It was a qualitative rather than a numerical survey. No numerical data was found. Participants may have lied or distorted their answers to fit social norms. The numbers were found afterwards rather than being given by the participants. 100 adults, even done for 9 months, making 900 adults, is also a relatively small sample of participants. It therefore cannot be generalised to everybody, everywhere. Finally, the data collected in this experiment was quite limited. Participants were only asked which hassles and uplifts they experienced and were asked to rank them. They were not asked to give any explanations or any further details at all, resulting in rather limited data. Some other studies and research done has reinforced the conclusions found by Kanna. A study done using first-year French psychology students in 2007 came to much the same results and much the same conclusions. 41%, so just under half of these students, experienced psychological symptoms of depression, and there was a very strong positive correlation between these students suffering depression and those suffering recurring daily stresses. That said, however, we must stress this is a correlative rather than causal link. There may well have been many other external factors at play. These students may have been suffering money worries which contributed to both, or their living conditions may well have contributed to both daily stress and depression. DeLongis, working with a group of researchers in 1988, developed a systematic and itemised numerical scale which combined both uplifts and daily hassles. This is still in use today and is known as the Combined Hassles and Uplifts Scale. 
Participants in this research were asked to rank each of 53 daily events on how much they impacted them that day. These could have been either positive or negative. They were both hassles and uplifts. This particular research found no link whatsoever between major life events like divorce or bereavement and illness, but did find a link between daily hassles and illness. Like any and every system or model in psychology, there are some issues with the hassles and uplifts scale. Many of these are methodological. Firstly, every bit of the research done was and remains correlational rather than causal. It doesn't show a strong causal link, and there may well be, as we've seen, many extraneous variables at play, for example, living conditions or money worries. Secondly, there are other resources available to individuals that this model or this system doesn't take into account, such as the availability of therapy and medicine, reserves of money, the love of our families. None of these have been taken into account. They may give individuals additional resources to deal with daily hassles. These resources may mitigate or eliminate those hassles, or at least the stress caused by them. Thirdly, as with any area of psychology, there are always individual differences. Differences between each individual person. Every one of us responds to daily hassles and uplifts in slightly different ways. Something which is a massive annoyance and a stressful annoyance for one person may be completely irrelevant and ignored by another person. Fourthly, there are also cultural differences. Loud noises and gesticulations are very rare in some cultures, but a very common method of communication in others. In the first culture, they may well be a stressor. In the second culture, they won't be. Any scale developed is intrinsically going to be ethnocentric and therefore can't be generalised to all cultures everywhere. The final issue with the hassles and uplift scale is that much of the research done and the conclusions generated relied on self-reporting having individual participants fill in questionnaires. As we've already seen, this is wildly unreliable. It's open to dishonesty and participants lying, and it's also at the mercy of social factors, such as the desire of participants to be seen to be able and be seen to be able to cope. Ouch. Mm, I'll beat you, Krim.